We're going to talk about some news today. We got four stories for you guys. Kind of a mixed bag here of really neat and interesting good stories and some strange ones, including the possibility that at some point in the future, we may not be able to trade in physical games anymore, even though they might still exist. Oh no, God! No, God, please, no! 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 Look, this is kind of crazy. So is the fact that Nintendo shot down yet another fan game, but it highlights something that many people wish would change about the company. And by the way, we have an update a little bit on the Mario movie too. And speaking of Mario, huh, a little odd discovery has finally been made after nearly 28 years. Oh baby, let's go ahead, buckle up, and let's dive right into the news. And the very first story we're dealing with is the Link's Awakening fan game. So for those who are unaware, because we didn't really talk about it on the channel, there was a fan version of Link's Awakening DX that was ported to PC. You're seeing footage of it right now. It looks really cool, and it zooms out more and has a more dynamic loading screen, and it, obviously it runs a super high frame rate. It's not that frame rates at this point really matter when you're playing this type of game. Anytime time you're above 60 FPS for this, you're pretty much at the peak of what's going to be possible, but it's still really neat, and honestly, a lot of people are really enjoying it. Now, of course, this was not a sanctioned game by Nintendo to have this done to and it got really popular and like all fan games that get really popular like this Nintendo's legal team took action they basically gave out what was essentially a cease and desist uh, and the download link and everything was taken down now this has been downloaded by so many people it's not that hard to find if you know the places to look so once it hits the internet it's on the internet, but this does highlight that Nintendo still is doing these sort of things when something like this might have made more sense to possibly hire this developer on and maybe make this possible on Switch or Switch 2 as an NSO Magic Edition, and then you can start doing this to maybe other old school games, or maybe just try to convince Nintendo to release some of these games on PC. Look, I don't think there was any harm in this fan game. It certainly wasn't going to hurt sales of Link's Awakening on Switch, though, the remake version certainly wasn't going to stop people from playing the original on nso i think it was mostly a harmless thing that fans created but nintendo's gonna nintendo and anytime you release a fully playable version of their game in an unintended way nintendo's gonna take action so it's unfortunate it was also expected. Quickly, before I jump into this next story, hey guys, we are on our road to 150,000 subscribers. So I'd appreciate it if you would drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and maybe go ahead and ding that bell icon so you're notified of all uploads. Okay, we're done, let's go. Next up, we have an update on the Mario movie too. And this is because Jack Black actually talked about it. And look, we already know the second Mario movie is gonna happen, we're gonna have a sequel. This was already confirmed by Chris Pratt a long time ago when he said he was signed down for multiple Mario movies and he, Mentioned in that little late night talk show that he wasn't even sure if he was supposed to say that, but it is what it is. They were always planning before the first one came out to make more. So they had a feeling it would be successful. But Jack Black put out a few interesting quotes about the Mario movie, the second one, basically saying it's radio silence and he hasn't been contacted for anything regarding the movie. Also, he went on to say he's got some ideas for it if they want to listen, such as he thinks maybe the second movie should be called Bowser's Revenge or something along those lines, just so, hey, it's like an Empire Strikes Back sort of theme. And he also wonders if it should be more of a musical. You know, you could look at all the Disney-style musical you know, animated films, and I do enjoy those. But he's like, hey, look, the second Joker film's going to end up being a musical, so why not make this a musical? I'm still a little skeptical on the second Joker film being a musical, but we'll see how it works. Remember, being a musical doesn't mean the entire thing is sang to you, right? It just means there's a lot of songs, not necessarily that the entire story is told through songs. So, We'll have to wait and see what happens, but I just know that these are just ideas from Jack Black. But the big update, really, that we should take away from this as it doesn't sound like they've really made any progress on the next Mario movie, now, at least from you know recording lines and getting things ready to go. There's probably script writing happening. And I will note that this sort of makes sense. One, we just had a, you know, there, there was an, an actor strike and a, you know, a writer strike. And I know both of those things are over now, but they were ongoing for so long. It's highly unlikely they would be at the point of needing to record voices right now. 
probably still a year or two away from doing that. But beyond that, they're focusing on the Zelda movie, right? Miyamoto is is over there working on the Zelda movie. Chances are they're going to need to make significant progress on that movie before Miyamoto swings back over to Illumination for the second Mario movie. So while both movies will probably get, at some point, some crossover and being made behind the scenes, I would venture to guess that the Mario movie is not nearly as far along as what the Zelda movie is, at least when it comes to the sequel. Now, next up, we're going to be talking about Sony, but I want to be clear here. I love PlayStation 5. I've actually been playing Skull and Bones on the system because, man, oh, man, oh, man, is it... It's kind of crazy that I got into that closed beta. Like, I, PlayStation 5 is a system I actually enjoy. But I'm bringing up these policies from Sony because it's a little scary on what this could mean for the future if everyone starts to adapt them. And I don't even know how legal this is. And I, it, it's interesting. So we all know Sony's already been in hot water lately, right? Them and Discovery had a split. Sony just jacking things you purchased right out of your library. No refunds or anything. Really sucks. They also accidentally, quote unquote, banned thousands of accounts, removing hundreds and hundreds of games from people's libraries. They've restored some of the accounts, but not all of them, even though the users never did anything wrong. Really, really sucks there. But now they have this new policy that they added in Europe. And oh my gosh, shout out to RGT85 for pointing this out to me because I didn't pay enough attention to Sony side of stuff. But oh man, here's, a, here's exactly what it reads. And this is scary. You must not resell either disc-based games or digital games unless expressly authorized by us and if the publisher is another company, additionally by the publisher. So what they're saying is, hey, did you buy a physical copy of Spider-Man 2? You cannot resell it unless we say you can. Oh, and by the way... Did you buy a physical copy of the latest Call of Duty game? Guess what? Not only do we have to tell you that you can sell it if it's a PS5 version, so does the publisher. This is a policy, while I'm not sure that it's legal, if it is legal, if it becomes legal, this is scary because other companies may adopt this policy, Nintendo, Xbox, etc. And if it gets widely adopted and starts to leave Europe and go to a bunch of other countries like here in the United States, that is scary. This is essentially a we're trying to end physical games, period. We already know we can't resell digital games in most marketplaces and we have a Hard time dealing with that, but that's reality. But one of the primary focuses to still buy physical games is resale value. And if suddenly GameStop and all these other retailers out there, I'm not saying that eBay is going to get shut down at the moment, but a bunch of these other places that we're selling games at start to be like, hey, we can no longer buy your games because Sony never gave permission for said games to be resold. That is scary. And I do not like it. And this is just Sony pushing everyone closer and closer to an all digital marketplace. But again, this is just in one, you know, this is just in Europe. I don't even know if it's legal. If it is legal and we find out that it is, I do worry if other companies may adopt this policy. Someone always goes first. Everyone else seems to always follow suit. And Sony is one of the market leaders. So if this starts to work for them and they're seeing higher profit margins, pushing people to digital, what happens if Nintendo says, hey, you can no longer resell our games? <sighs> That's going to be a rough future if that is what we're looking at for Switch 2. But again, this is just a Sony policy in Europe. Now, lastly, we have a little, little bit of an Easter egg. Uh, this is something that people have known existed for a long time, but we never really saw proof. You guys remember Super Mario 64, right? Of course you do. It's one of the greatest games ever made one of the best mario games ever made a pivotal game you know it was one of the big selling points for super mario 3d all-stars and all this stuff right and they've technically like remastered it and added more playable characters and stuff like this on older versions on handheld but here's the thing way back in the day there were reports that luigi was supposed to be a playable character in the original release on the n64 and there were reports that nintendo had this in a demo at space world and look, you might not remember what Space World was. It was like an E3 style event, but just for Nintendo. It was a Nintendo ran event. And the funny thing is, we've known that there was a playable version of Luigi at Space World this entire time. But the problem is, this is back in 1995. We didn't have smartphones, there wasn't cameras everywhere. And so we hadn't seen footage of Luigi being playable, despite the fact that we knew from reports that Luigi was actually playable at the demos there for Mario 64. 
Well, some footage has surfaced. And look, it's just a little teaser. It's just Luigi spinning around, right? Coming to the ground. Not a big deal. It kind of looks like Mario's model, but wearing green. I get it. It's not, it doesn't look like it was ever fully fleshed out. But it is just the physical, tangible, see with our own eye proof that, yes, Luigi was at one point intended to be a playable character, an optional playable character in the original Mario 64. Now, why he was removed, I don't know. Maybe it's just because due to RAM limitations or other limitations of the system, they just couldn't make him different enough in a playable form to justify having him. As I said, he kind of just looks like Mario wearing green. <laughs> so there is that. But hey, guys, I don't really know. I'm just going to kind of sit back here and let you guys chew on it. It's just a very, very interesting part of gaming history to resurface. And also, it's a bit of a lighter story to end with, considering we had a couple not so great stories today mixed in to the fray. But hey, this is your Sunday, one of the final Sundays of, well, this is your Sunday, December 17th. Enjoy watching football or whatever you're doing today. I'm going to sit back and enjoy the fact that today is actually my daughter's 13th birthday. So, uh, Melody, when you check out this video later, happy birthday. Welcome to being a teenager, officially. I'll catch you guys in the next video.